Hello, my name is Scott and welcome to today's tutorial where we will be exploring how to set up and effectively use Blackboard discussion boards. Discussion boards are a form of asynchronous learning which permits students to respond in their own time. This gives students more time to think before they post ideas, which can potentially mean more thoughtful responses. Discussion boards can help permit the online exchange of ideas between students, but also between lecturers and students as well. They form another way to interact and engage with students in an online environment and will be important in the current circumstances to help foster a community for students. And whether discussion boards are set up, moderated and used correctly, they can permit robust discussions. Let's now move over to the Blackboard environment to see the functionality of discussion boards and how we can use it in practice. To begin, we will need to access the discussion boards. To do this, once in the module, move to the remote teaching tab and select the online discussion forum option. This will then open up the pre-created Blackboard discussion forum. What we can see is we already have an example thread here. So let's take a look at this. Once we open the thread, what will happen is the content of that thread will expand so we can see it. If we wish to reply, we could click the reply button. But for now, let's move back to the main board section to see how we can create a post from the beginning. To create a new thread, we need to click the Create Thread option. This will then bring up a box where we can type the subject or the title of the thread. So for this example, I'm going to use the title Test Topic. Then we can type in the message box where we want the contents of this thread to be. Here, I'm just going to type in what text would go here. From here, we can then choose whether to add or attach anything to the files. And as we're not going to for this demo, we will just click Submit. Then if I now click through the actual test topic thread, you'll see we can see the thread. To reply to this thread, we just click reply. And then again in the message box, we type in the text that we want to reply with. Once we have done this, we just click submit. And what we'll see is the reply now comes underneath the original thread. If you want, we can click the edit button and go into that reply if the setting is set up and edit the response. And then again, we click submit. If we wish to delete the reply and the options available, we can click delete and that will remove that reply. We can also do the same for deleting an actual whole thread topic. There are a lot of options we can have within a discussion board. To access these for the remote teaching one, click on the discussion board option. Then select edit. From here, we can change the name of the forum. We can add a description about the forum. We can decide whether it's available to students or not, or enter restriction dates. And we can then change various other settings under the forum setting heading. So we can change whether participants must create a thread in order to view other threads in the forum. We can change whether they're allowed to subscribe to the thread or not. We can allow students to post anonymously, i.e. without their username. We can then choose whether to allow authors to delete their own posts, whether that's all posts or only posts which have replies. We can also choose whether we permit authors to edit their own published posts. And again, we've got to think about continuality here. We can allow members to create new threads. We can permit things like file attachments or not. We can allow users to reply with a quote or we can force moderate all posts. And also we can allow members to rate posts so whether they think a post is good or not. Once we've made the changes, we just need to click submit and that will bring us back to the discussion board. Let's now look at some more advanced features. This will be particularly useful if you decide you want to create a whole new discussion board. To do this, we need to ensure that the edit mode is on. Then we move over to the plus icon and choose tool link. From here, we then need to change the type to a discussion board. For this example, I'm just going to name it discussion board. Then we click submit although we should also make this available to users. Then from here, if we click on the discussion board icon that pops up, we can then select to create a new forum. 
we need to give this forum a name. So for this example, I'm just going to call it new discussion board. Then we can give a description for this. We can set its availability. And again, we can go through and adjust all of the forum settings manually. So for example, allowing subscriptions or anonymous posts and allowing people to tag others in posts or to rate posts. Once we've done this, we click submit and we'll find that that new forum has been created. And again, we can start by creating a thread here as we did in the earlier part of this tutorial. So how can we create effective discussion boards? Well, there are multiple ways to do this, but four top tips would be first to clearly set out expectations on students for participating in the online discussion boards. This would include information on how regularly students should engage with the boards, the expected behavior and language. So for example, using professional language, avoiding the use of emoticons, text language or slang. When setting out the etiquette requirements, it is also worth considering the following areas to offer guidance on. So how to title threads, how to support arguments and claims with evidence and the inclusion of attachments, how to keep threads on topics and the need to be respectful of other students' opinions. Second, create effective discussion questions and topics. So for example, here, it will be advisable to avoid the use of questions which can be given a simple yes or no answer but use ones which require further analysis and discussion. Online videos and images can be incorporated into these questions and topics or used in their own right. For example, asking the students to watch a video and comment on certain aspects of that video clip. Third, actively encourage the exchange of new ideas by the students. This can include encouraging the discussion of differences of opinions and the challenging of views. Four, Manage and moderate the discussion boards and contribute to help discussions develop. Also try to actively encourage all students to engage with the discussions on the boards. There are a variety of useful resources available online regarding Blackboard forums, but two I would recommend checking out in particular are Blackboard's own detailed guidance and the UEA's guidance. Thank you for watching and I hope you found this tutorial useful and I look forward to seeing you all again in the next one.